In this lesson, our goal is to look at how to solve equations graphically on a TI-83 or 84 calculator. We will learn two different methods as well as a couple tricks of the trade. For this lesson, you will want to have your graphing calculator handy as we will be using them on almost every example. You'll also want to make sure your calculator is in function mode before we begin. Alright, well let's start by solving this equation 3x minus 2 is equal to 2x plus 7. Well, we'll take 2x from both sides to get the x's on the same side. 3x minus 2x is 1x, so we have x minus 2 is equal to 7. We'll add 2 to both sides to get the x alone. And x is equal to 9. So 9 is the solution to this equation. And it's the value that makes both sides the same value, which in this case would be 25. So 3 times 9 is 27, minus 2 is 25. And 2 times 9 is 18, plus 7, which is 25. So for this equation, we knew some very specific steps and algebraic properties that allowed us to easily arrive at the solution. For some equations, though, there are no prescribed steps that will provide an exact solution. So for these types of equations, graphical approximation methods are a practical alternative. So now let me take a moment to show you how uh, we could have solved this equation using a graphical approximation method. So in this example, we know that both sides of the equation are equal to 25 when x is 9. So we can say that the left side of the equation is equal to y, and the right side of the equation is also equal to y. We know that they're the same value when x is 9. So when x is 9, y is equal to 25. And in fact, if we were to graph these two equations, we would see that the two lines intersect at the point when x is 9 and y is 25. So we would know that 9 is the solution to this equation because it's the value of x that produces equal outputs. This is called the intersection method for solving equations. To use the intersection method, each side of the equation is viewed as the output of a function. And the solutions of the equation represent inputs that produce equal outputs. So this input of 9 produces equal outputs of 25. So here we're given an unfamiliar looking equation that we're going to solve using the intersect method. So to solve this equation, we'll graph each side of this equation as its own separate function, and the solution will be the inputs that produce equal outputs, or in other words, the x-coordinates of the points where the two graphs intersect. So we'll take out our calculator. We're going to graph the left-hand side as function 1. We'll graph the right-hand side as function 2. So to get to the absolute value, we'll go to math, number ABS, that's number 1, the absolute value of x squared minus 4x minus 3. Function 2 is going to be x cubed plus x minus 6. Now we just need to graph each function and find out where they intersect. So we'll go to graph When using this method, it's important that you want to make sure that your viewing window allows you to see a complete graph so you can see all the points of intersection. So I want to make sure that I'm seeing a complete view of the graph, so I'm just going to go to zoom standard 6 to kind of get a different view. Alright, so it looks like there's one point of intersection. Now to find that point of intersection, we're going to go to second, trace, and down to intersect. And now it says the first curve. So we're going to pick a point on the first curve close to the intersection. Okay, that's close. Now our cursor has moved to the second curve. We're going to move close to the point of intersection, hit enter, and then we'll guess at the point of intersection. So right and left gets you about that close, so we'll say that's our guess. Our intersection occurs at 2.2. So the graphs of each side of the equation intersect at this one point, which is approximately 2.207. And that's the value of x when substituted back into the equation will produce equal outputs of 6.957. So to solve an equation in the form f of x is equal to g of x by using the intersection method, we'll follow two steps. One, graph the first function as f of x and the second function as g of x on the same screen and then find the x-coordinate of each point of intersection. A similar method for solving obscure looking equations is called the x-intercept method. To use this method, we first set the equation equal to zero, 
and then graph the equation to see where the graph crosses the x-axis. Or in other words, find all the values of x that make the equation equal to zero. So if we're given a function and r is a solution to that function, that means the graph crosses the x-axis at r. And so r would be a zero of the function. r could also be called an x-intercept of the graph of the function. And x equals r is a solution or root of that equation. So for example two, we're going to solve this equation using the x-intercept method. Now in the previous example, we would have graphed each side separately and then graphed the equation to find out where each side intersects. Well, with the x-intercept method, what we're going to do is we're going to set the equation equal to zero and then graph the function and find where that graph crosses the x-axis. So we first want to set this equation equal to zero. So we'll move the x cubed and the five to the left side. So we'll have x to the fifth plus x squared minus x cubed minus five is equal to zero. And if we wanted to write this in standard form, we'd write x to the fifth minus x cubed plus x squared minus five is equal to zero. Well now we need to pull up our graphing calculator and we'll graph this function. So we'll hit y equals, we'll say we have x raised to the fifth power minus x raised to the third power plus x squared minus five graph. Well you can see that this graph is equal to zero at this point. So now we just need to find the zero of this function. So we'll go to second trace and we're going to find our zero, so number two. So the calculator asks for a left bound, meaning a boundary point to the left of the zero. So we can click here and say enter. Now we're looking for a right bound. So the calculator needs to know that our right boundary is over here. So we'll hit enter and then guess, enter again. And our solution, our value of x that makes this equation equal to zero is about 1.4. So in this equation, we're gonna solve a radical equation that's set to zero. And what we're gonna find is when we graph this on the calculator, we're going to run into a little uh, issue here. So we're going to graph the square root of x to the fourth minus or plus x squared minus two two x minus one. Okay, we'll graph this. So you'll notice that the calculator is not showing the entire graph, and that's just an error with the calculator. Um, so to get around this, what we're actually going to do is just use this fact that um, the square root of zero is zero. So that means everything on the inside of this equation has to be equal to zero because the square root of zero is equal to zero. So what we know is that x to the fourth plus x squared minus two x minus one also must be zero. Now when we graph it, we're going to get a different graph, but it's going to have the same solutions as this equation. So we're going to come back, we'll delete this one, and we're just going to graph what's underneath the radical sign. x raised to the fourth plus x squared minus 2x minus 1. Okay, so the idea is the, this graph is the graph of this equation, but it shares the same solutions as this equation, because the square root of zero is th zero. So while the square root of x to the fourth plus x squared minus two x minus one is equal to zero, so is just x to the fourth plus x squared minus two x minus one. So they share the same solutions. Now to find the solutions, we're just gonna go to second trace. We're gonna find our zeros. So we're going to move our cursor to our left boundary and hit enter, our right boundary, enter, and then guess. Okay, so one of the zeros, x is about, well, about negative 0.4. Now we'll find the second zero, second trace, zero. Now this is where an error can sometimes happen. Your left bound now is below your intersection point. That's to the left of your uh, your zero. So enter, right boundary, enter, guess. 
Okay, so the second zero, x is about 1.2. So these are the two solutions to this equation, but they're also the same two solutions to this equation. So in this problem, we're going to graph a fractional equation. So we'll start by graphing it on the graphing calculator. And when you enter this in, you want to enter in the numerator in parentheses and then the denominator in parentheses. So we're going to use parentheses 2x squared plus x minus 1, close parentheses divided by in parentheses 8x squared minus 9x plus 2. Okay, so now we can graph it. What you're going to see is well, this graph is a little bit hard to read. You can see that there's one intersection point here, but this one is not as easy to read. And so what we're going to do is we're just going to use the fact that a fraction is only equal to 0 when the numerator is 0. So let me show you what I mean. A fraction is only equal to 0 when the numerator is 0. So 0 divided by anything, let's just say 6. 0 divided by 6 is 0. So we can use this fact to help us solve this equation. It's the numerator that needs to be 0. So all we actually need to do is solve the equation 2x squared plus x minus 1 is equal to 0, and we'll solve this equation. It's not that we're ignoring the denominator, but it's the numerator that makes this equation equal to 0. So now we just need to go back to our calculator. We'll delete this graph, and we'll just graph uh, the numerator. So 2x squared plus x minus 1. Okay, so this is a quadratic. It's a second degree equation. You can see our two zeros. We'll use our zero feature. Second trace, zero. We'll go find our left bound first. So we hit enter, move to our right boundary, enter, and then guess. Okay, so you can see that one e answer, one root, one zero to this equation x equals negative 1. Now we'll find the second uh, 0, so second trace. Again, when we find this left boundary, you just got to recognize that the left, this time, is below your x-intercept. So enter, right boundary, enter, and then guess. Okay, so the second solution, the second root to this equation is 1 half. And again, the idea of solving this fractional equation was that it is the numerator that makes this equation equal to zero, so we just set the numerator to zero and solve that.